Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Cheryl Ann Warwood, and welcome to the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries Facebook Live. And I'm going to be talking to you about African swine fever. So let's go. So what has COVID taught us, COVID-19 taught us in recent times? It has taught us about the interconnectedness of the world. Someone from Russia, Singapore, Borneo can be in the UK, Miami, New York, and then in Trinidad in 48 hours. It has also taught us that microorganisms can spread on disease surfaces. I know it sounds something very simple, but it's something that we are now appreciating. So everything you touch, your phone, countertops, shopping carts, door handles, credit cards, a possible means of infection. And they have to be cleaned thoroughly to protect you and keep you safe. COVID-19 has also taught us that biosecurity is very important for disease prevention. Biosecurity protects us by separating us from the disease organism. So that is why we wear the masks. That is why we stay six feet apart. That is why we use alcohol and hand sanitizers. That is why you avoid touching your face. All of these are elements of biosecurity. So we're going to move that and keep that in mind when we're thinking about African swine fever. COVID-19 has also taught us that food security is a priority. And this is a quote from the chairman of the World Food Day National Committee for Trinidad and Tobago last year. And this was her call to action in light of the pandemic. As citizens, we need to adopt a new mindset by supporting local producers. Because when there is a disease situation that is affecting the globe, it does affect our ability to import food. And why are we importing food when we are supposed to be creating it for ourselves? It affects the disposable income of people as well. So that is it. some of the things that COVID-19 has taught us. So we're going into African swine fever. African swine fever is a viral disease in domestic pigs and wild boars. We do not have wild boars in Trinidad. We have a family which is called the peccary. But again, bear it in mind. Now, African swine fever has no treatment and there's currently no vaccine. It is caused by a DNA virus that does not affect humans. That means it is not zoonotic. Zoonotic is where diseases jump from animals to humans. Sometimes it jumps back from humans to animals, but often it is moaning from animals to humans. So it's not zoonotic. So you don't have to worry about your own personal health. It was originally seen in Africa, in Kenya, in the 1940s. But now, in 2021, it is in many countries in Europe. It is throughout Asia. And just to have a picture in your mind, there was a, one, a reduction to one quarter of the world's entire pig population from both the disease and the disease control measures. Sorry about that. So African swine fever. Yes, it has been seen in our part of the world, but this was seen in Haiti in 1979, in Cuba, 71 and 80, Dominican Republic, 1978, and in Brazil in 1978 as well. But all of those outbreaks were eradicated at that time. So right now, as we stand again, there's no African swine fever in the Caribbean or in many parts of Latin America. This is a disease that results in a lot of production losses and a lot of economic losses. So again, picture, we are a population of 1.4 million. In China in 2019, 40 million pigs died as a result of COVID-19 in one year. That is a lot of money lost. That is a lot of livelihoods lost. So what is African swine fever? It's a hemorrhagic fever in domestic pigs and wild boars with a mortality of up to 100%. So you can have 15 pigs in the morning and the following day you have 15 dead pigs as 100% mortality. It's a notifiable disease in Trinidad and Tobago. 
And what do we mean by notifiable disease? If a vet or a farmer suspects that they have African swine fever, it must be reported to the Ministry of Agriculture. And then we of the Ministry of Agriculture must confirm that it's African swine fever. And we have to report it to the World Organization for Animal Health. Why do we have to report it? Because this can affect trade. Just as for COVID-19, all the cases have to be reported to the WHO, we have to report to the World Organization for Animal Health. So what are some of the signs of African swine fever? There are two, several forms, but the acute form, you can see a high fever up to 46 degrees, depression, anorexia and loss of appetite, hemorrhages in the skin, particularly redness on the extremities, which would be the ears, the feet, the snout. If you have pregnant cells, you can have abortion. You can often see, often see all the pigs huddling up together. You may have vomiting and diarrhea, and you can have death within four to 13 days. And as I mentioned before, mortality is as high as 100%. And in red, you see sometimes pig die suddenly with no signs of disease. So as I said, one day you have 15 pigs, the other day you have 15 dead pigs, and you have no idea what has happened because you're not seeing anything externally. So these are some of the clinical signs. On the left, you see the snout is slightly reddened. On the right, I don't know if you can see my pointer, but the back end by the rump is reddened. You see on the bottom left, the reddening of the ear, the reddening of the throat, and then to the far right, you see the pigs all huddled together. So they have a subacute and chronic form, which is basically the signs are not as severe and they're not as pronounced, and the mortality can be lower. Instead of 100%, it's 30 to 70%. Because it's not happening immediately and it's taking a little bit longer, you may see actually weight loss, you may see intermittent fever, you may notice that the pigs are having difficulty breathing and you may actually see a nasal discharge. Sometimes, again, you may see chronic ulcers on the skin or the animal may look like if it's having problems walking. So it may look like arthritis, it may look like lameness, it may look like incoordination. And death or recovery takes three to four weeks. So how is ASF transmitted? Most commonly by direct contact with infected domestic or wild pigs. And as I mentioned before, we have a peccary, which is the local pig, the wild hog, the quenk, and at this point in time has not been shown to become infected by disease. But we know that this situation can change, so it's something we always have to be aware of and be prepared for. ASF can also be transmitted by indirect contact through ingestion of, connect of contaminated material. So that is food waste. So waste from restaurants, contaminated feed, if pigs are allowed to forage and feed on garbage, if they are dead pigs and they are allowed to feed on them, that's the way you can have the disease transmitted. Contaminated fomites. Remember we mentioned before with COVID, how you can touch items and they become sources of infection. Likewise for animals, farm equipment, car tires, clothing, shoes, if you've been exposed to a contaminated premises. And they also can be transmitted by vectors. Right now, it's a soft tick called Ornithodorus. And wherever that is present, they can transmit the disease because they become infected for life. And we do have Ornithodorus species of ticks in the Caribbean and in Trinidad and Tobago. So this is a graphic I wanted you to see because it gives clearly how pigs become infected. If we look to the right, so sorry, to the left, the orange represents an infected pig. How does this pig become infected? By direct contact with another infected pig, as we mentioned before, by fomites. So either you have a contaminated vehicle, you have a contaminated equipment, you've brought it in on your shoes. Also mentioned before, the soft tick, there are wild pigs in Africa, and this is where it's commonly transmitted from the soft tick to the pig. Likewise, if someone has come to your farm and brought in contaminated meat and thrown it for the pigs, that is another way the pig can become infected. Now, on the right side, 
We're looking at the wild boar and how they become infected. Again, a soft kit can bite the animal and transmit the disease. It can be in direct contact with another infected animal. And in both the Europe and Africa, this, the hunters are also a very important means of transmission. The hunter has gone into the forest or gone and done a hunting, killed an animal that has become infected, taken that home, put it in their freezer, probably works on a pig farm and transmits it in that way. So this is a really nice graphic for you all to pay attention to when you have the time. So the virus. The African swine fever virus is considered to be extremely hardy. And what does that mean? In temperate countries, it can survive in meat at four degrees Celsius for months. It's actually about two to three months. In frozen carcasses, it can last at least six months. And I said at least. So it has also been shown to be up to like one and a half years. So freezing will not kill it. It survives in skin and fat for 300 days. So this becomes important for disposal. If you have a carcass that's on the side of the road or on the farm that has not been appropriately disposed of, every animal that comes into contact with that, that is uh, susceptible, can become infected. Ham and brine for 180 days. Salted and dried meat is still present for 120 days. And in a contaminated pen, it can last for 30 days. So how can the disease the virus be destroyed. It can be inactivated by heat, 56 degrees Celsius for 70 minutes or 60 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. It is, as I mentioned before, it's very resistant to cold, so freezing will not change, uh, will not kill the virus. And those are just some examples of some disinfectants, sodium hypochlorite, citric acid, sodium chloride, potassium, peroxy monosulfate. Say that three times fast. So how is it possible for ASF to get into Trinidad and Tobago? It's most likely going to come with travelers. Travelers bringing either specialty meats that they've gotten in some sort of artisan farmer's market, coming in in your clothing and on your footwear, coming in with smuggled animals smuggled infected pigs, smuggled infected wild meat, wild hog, quenk, smuggled infected meat products. The picture on the right, this was a seizure that happened about within the last two months. This was a leg of pork coming in again with other illegal items. I think you might have seen it on our Facebook page. And it can come in with contaminated vehicles as well. If vehicles are not properly washed and disinfected, before they come in, because again, remember, we import a lot of foreign used parts and vehicles from China. So how can we protect the farm? I'm sorry that there are so many things on this slide, but this is not the only things that you can do. This is just giving you a suggestion of what can be done. Very important is enf enhanced farm security, biosecurity. First thing, you have to have a biosecurity plan. And what is a biosecurity plan? Measures that prevent the entry onto the farm of disease-causing agents, viruses, bacteria, fungi, etc. Everything that comes into your farm should be clean and disinfected. So that's all the equipment, all the vehicle, all the vehicle, all the visitor footwear. And you can get around this by if you have visitors, have them change clothes, change footwear, provide them with disposable footwear, provide them provide them with disposable coveralls. Do not share equipment between farms. I know sometimes you'll say, okay, you can borrow my truck to move X, Y, and Z. If you are doing that when you really should, should not, again, disinfect it before it comes back onto the farm, because that is a potential source of infection. It's also important to do record keeping. Record keeping, record keeping, record keeping. Record all your equipment, record all the vehicles that have come into the farm. Record all the animals that have come into the farm. Record the workers daily that have come into the farm and visitors. So, you know, we all are familiar with trace back and contact tracing. That is what the record keeping would help with. You have to isolate any sick animals. 
do not leave them in the same pen with apparently healthy animals because again that is a way that can, uh, the disease can spread and a lot of farmers do not necessarily practice this quarantining of new stock when you're bringing them into the herd i would suggest and the literature suggests that they have been quarantined for about 30 days because as i mentioned before the disease can express itself between three and 20 days, 19 days. So if you have isolated the animals or quarantined the animals for 30 days, you will see if the disease is present. Also, this is not necessarily something that we see here in Trinidad, but I think we've seen it on TV where animals go to a farm, to fairs, because I had the best pig, it had the biggest pig, it had the most piglets, and it has spent a couple of weeks or days at a, at a fair. When it comes back, it should also be isolated because, again, we don't know who was feeding it. We don't know who was providing it with um, care. We don't know who, where it walked and what it was exposed to. So it's a very important to quarantine stuff that is returning from an exhibit or a fair or something of that nature. It has gone left the farm for some reason. It's coming back. Don't bring it directly into the herd. Again, this is, it seems a little bit extreme, but it's very important if you want to protect your animals. Don't allow staff to bring pork products onto the farm because it's so simple. Pigs, as everyone believes, will eat anything. And if you leave it behind, you throw it for the pigs. What was in the food? Is it something that could have been contaminated? And again, restrict visitors, particularly from ASF affected countries. And most importantly, know the signs of ASF and report any suspect cases to your county veterinary officers, and those numbers should be available on the Facebook page. Most, most importantly, do not feed your pigs garbage. Do not feed waste, particularly from planes and boats. So why should we be concerned about ASF? I took this from a magazine from May 2021. The headline was, African swine fever ravaging Borneo's wild pigs. African swine fever has breached the island of Borneo, where it is wiping out populations of the wild bearded pig, Sirius barbatus. So what is the outcome for a country that has African swine fever? Is a severe socioeconomic impact. As I mentioned before, when an animal is infected, that animal has to be removed and culled, euthanized. That, and that has to happen also with the in-contact animals, the animals who are in contact with the infected animal. So in one day or in one episode, one outbreak, is attackers are out of work, similar to what is happening with respect to COVID-19. So that's a very big socioeconomic impact. There's also a ban on international trade, both in pay and in other commodities because other countries outside may not know if let's say the chickens are on a farm that also has pigs if the beef is on a farm that also has pigs so initially there will be a ban on agricultural products and as mentioned before there'll be significant losses to the farmer because the farmer has to one probably lose all the animals and two let his farm rest for a while and again, we mentioned before, I remember I mentioned before, food security is very important. When you have lost a whole farm, that is protein that has not gone back into the food chain. So what happens if ASF is found on a farm in Trinidad and Tobago? Vet services in cooperation with the farm, because it's not just vet services alone, vet services will do the diagnosis via PCR, which we all again all very familiar with, either locally or internationally. As I mentioned before, we have to report to OIE, and just as COVID-19 has to be diagnosed in particular labs for this notifiable disease, particular labs have to diagnose African swine fever, and they're called reference labs, and they are in the UK and the United States. All infected animals and animals that were in contact with the infected animals must be isolated and culled or euthanized. Because remember, this is a very highly infectious disease and it can spread very quickly and there's a 100% mortality. 
So you want to be able to isolate and control the spread of the disease. Very important is the safe disposal of carcasses. As I mentioned before, it can last in fact for 300 days. If a carcass is thrown into a river or buried in a shallow grave, dogs can pick it up, drag it around, and again, other animals can have access to it, possibly pigs. What else is going to happen? Cleaning and disinfection of pens, vehicles, and equipment. And again, most important, as I mentioned before, surveillance. In conjunction and cooperation with the farmer, you have to trace back. Who did you buy the animals from? Identify the source of infection. Excuse me, have other animals been sold to other people? Likewise, trace forward. Did you sell any animals to locate new infected animals on new farms? It's very important that cooperation, as we understand, where has the disease come from and where is it going? And again, you understand that very well from the contact tracing that has to be done for COVID-19. And remember, there is no cure for this disease. And currently, even though work is being done, there is no vaccine right now. So all of this has to happen quite quickly and has to happen efficiently. So again, this is a, it's a very complicated graphic, but this is just to remind us that um, the vehicle can be a source of infection. Farm workers can be a source of infection. Hunters can be a source of infection. Travelers coming in can be a source of infection. Even customs officers in handling of material that has been seized, they can be a source of infection. So we all have to be very careful. And um, again, respect biosecurity. So in closing, I have a short video for you to take a look at. If you give me a couple of moments while it opens. And I think it will encapsulate everything that has been said. Okay. How do I do that? One second. that so you should see the video now
Okay, we are back now, going back to the presentation. Sorry for the... Yeah, sorry about that. And so, in closing, Okay, sorry about the technical difficulties. So this is the end of the presentation and the whole purpose is to keep all those pigs healthy in Trinidad and Tobago and prevent the entry of African swine fever. Thank you very much and apologies again for the technical difficulties. There are some questions. Can it be transmitted to other livestock animals? I came in late. This is only a disease of pigs and domestic pigs in Trinidad and Tobago. At this point in time, our wild pigs, uh, our wild hog is not known to be infected. Are there any other questions? Well, if that's it, thank you very much. And the video can be found on the Facebook Live site shortly. Take care. Bye. Stay safe.